Hi, welcome back to Mr. Sogram's Maths. Today we are looking at the Holt Winters model for forecasting values on a time series graph. And we're specifically looking at which one you should use because you could choose either um, an additive or a multiplicative model. So the additive model uh, is the most useful when the seasonal component that you're looking at is added on as an absolute value. So it means that when you take the long term trend and you work out those seasonal components, um, you take a numerical value and you simply add it on or subtract it if it's a negative from that long term trend. This is best when those seasonal effects are roughly constant throughout your time series graph. Now, a multiplicative model, on the other hand, takes that seasonal component and it's added on as a proportional amount. Um, so the, the value that you add on isn't the same for every season, but it's, it's the same proportion in every season. So if you have a higher value of the long term trend, you would add on a larger seasonal component. So this is useful when you have the seasonal effects that appear to respond proportionally to increases and decreases in that long term trend. So maybe you might see that as the trend goes up, the seasonal um, variation is more pronounced, so it gets bigger as you uh, move through. So we'll take a look at the penguin population data that we've looked at in some of the other videos. Now that's available in NZ Graphy. You can load it up yourself and take a look. So this is um, one where we can look at those seasonal trends and see that it's following pretty much the same pattern every time. The gradients of these changes are the same for each of the different years. So we can think that the um, absolute values of those average seasonal effects can be added on. It doesn't change as we go through changes in the long term trend. They are generally adding about as much on or off of the long term trend each time. So for this one, an additive model would be appropriate. And you can have another look over the long term trend that we have here. You can see that there's no real difference in how those seasonal effects um, go throughout the, the series of this graph. There's no places where they tend to get bigger or, or smaller than what they were in previous years. Now, if we take the visitor data that's available in NZ Graph, we get a bit of a different picture. So this one, um, this first graph is done with the additive model applied to it. But if we take a look at the seasonal effects that are happening on our curve here, we can see that those gradients change over time. So they're not the same steepness in each of those different seasons, but we can see an increasing of steepness um, there. So we know that that seasonal effect is actually changing as we go through our time series. So this would suggest that we have a multiplicative um, model that would be better. You can see this on the long term trend as well, that those visitor data start off being smaller than um, the average seasonal effects. Then they kind of match in the middle and then they get bigger than the average seasonal effects. So a multiplicative model is probably better. So on NZ Grapher, I've made a multiplicative one for comparison, and here it is below. Now, if we just take a first look, we can see that the um, the model, the green line, is fitting the raw data much better now. And if we go back, um, if we scroll down a little bit and look at the residuals, you can see that there's a lot less differences there in the residuals than we had on the original additive one. So that multiplicative model is going to turn out to be a better suit for what we have happening. And you can see here we've got the seasonal trend is being gradually increased um, in the amount that's being added onto our curve. So it's multiplying up as we go through. And I'll just sh quickly show you on NZ Grapher um, where to do those things. So here's the original visitors to New Zealand additive model. Now, if we go down here, um, we can select to do a multiplicative instead. And I will then change that title to be um, the multiplicative model and update my graph. And there you can see we've got that second graph that I showed you.